Hey there, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today we finally have from Glass Beach, Plastic Death. So the frustrating part of being so late to an album that's recently been held up as a seminal, genre-breaking, entirely too online cult classic, to be fair, I was far from the only one who was late, is that pretty much every critique you might level at it is deflected with, well, that's the point, or that's part of the overall appeal. And you might understand that intellectually, but if you also know from where an act is drawing the influence, you might have an idea of how it could work more effectively for you. Now, the first Glass Beach album falls in that territory, a genre blurring, undulating mass of terrific grooves and melodic and lyrical eccentricities heavily indebted to late 90s emo that really could be taken to the next level by maybe mastering outside of one's bedroom. But hey, it's still a lot of homegrown charm, and given that I was so late to it, I figured by the time I got around to their sophomore album, I'd have more proper time to appreciate it in its given year. And hell, getting Will Yip to engineer it, that's a huge asset. Now granted, I was also hearing it was adopting a very different tone, a more progressive rock approach to all the genre blurring, so truth be told, I have no idea what to expect. And yet, I think there's a certain irony in how I think my original critique holds holds just as true this time around, and not only does Glass Beach understand that critique and not care about it, it becomes meta-commentary that underscores a lot of plastic death. And hey, you know what, I respect that. I am certain that Glass Beach were not responding directly to me on that critique, even if that sampled vocal at the beginning of Colacanth did sound eerily like my voice and had me scouring my backlog if I had ever talked about Banksy or Unis Anis. And I was the first person to ever really review Patricia Taxon's music on YouTube, of which there is some stark parallels here, if you know you know, but it does place this album in some fascinating territory, a project where miscommunication and obfuscation aren't just built into the album's experience, they are thematic centerpieces. An album that, for as much as it's doing its own thing in its own space, it's also in conversation with your experience of them doing so, and it's got no interest in making that conversation easy. Now what this means is that Glass Beach is not exactly interested in hooking you in a more conventional space. They nearly cut Puppy for being too accessible and radio friendly, so for an hour plus dreamlike meander through watery swan core inspired synth and guitar flourishes, wild transitions, blown out glitch, and increasingly indecipherable and abstracted lyrics where the traditional melodic hooks are in short supply, for the majority that's going to be a tough sell, especially as I personally personally never been that fond of Jay's increasingly raw vocals. I said that on the debut, especially given how fidgety and filmy some of the tonal choices that surround them are. But again, that's the point. Right from the first track, this album is challenging the engagement of mass culture with their art and the hostility that manifests when said culture is told you're not going to get what you want or expect. And when you remember that this album has a lot of stark parallels with the queer and specifically trans experience, the personal edge feels more visceral and matches language pulled from the horrors of war, built more to set the mood than any sense of literalism, but just as emotionally raw. And it's intensely connected to the psychological toll of releasing personal art like this to then be exposed like this, especially to a system that expects you to keep on churning, satisfy that audience as highlighted on the Kafka-esque motions, Foucault's panopticon being referenced on the CIA, because of course it is, it makes all the sense in the world, especially online, but they can't imagine another way. And on songs like Slip Under the Door and Cul-de-Sac, it references nostalgic stagnation and madness in that audience that comes with not evolving, but also the voyeuristic curiosity by the audience to engage with Glass Beach's world, but never really go deeper, never truly challenge their own internal stakes and all of it, because if they do, they might come out the other side as someone they don't recognize. As the killer describes in haunted, gory detail, tragically juxtaposed against that gorgeous string section. But it's important to highlight it's not just about provoking the audience or centering all of their experience. Jay has highlighted overlapping themes of the body, the virtual self, and that shadowy unconsciousness, the abyss. And as the queer artist in the picture, all three selves are being racked by clashing motivation, where the symbolic plastic death and harrowing of hell is needed to get to the other side, they don't expect you to understand if you're walking away. 
although there's a part of them that desperately wishes you would try to understand. And not for nothing, it is helped along by emotive climaxes on Comatose and Abyss Angel in succession, leading to a truly excellent album closer. Now, do I personally think that this thematic arc could have been translated with more conventionally structured hooks or grooves, especially as it is a little bit bizarre that despite Will Yip's production being more consistent, the bass lines feel a bit less defined overall? I mean, I think there's some merit in that for accessibility, but my angle and any of their queer framing, it doesn't matter. In another parallel to Patricia Taxon's music, especially Foley artist, or her more recent furry output the past year or two, Glass Speech is not about to compromise their visceral emotional truth to be subjugated as content. And even if the album doesn't fully stick for me in execution, I kind of respect the hell out of it for going there. And while there is a subsection of my audience that will adore this from the jump, I still recommend everyone takes the time to do the real proper deep dive. Absolutely a difficult listen, but I think for a lot of folks, it's going to be worth it. Check it out. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more reviews, please be sure to like, share, drop some comments, and subscribe. I want to think I got close to this album. Again, this sort of meta commentary is really up my alley, and I may be overthinking some of the particular angles, but again, when the language is this abstract, it does draw that sort of analysis and critique. And not gonna lie, I really enjoyed putting this review together. And if you guys want to see more reviews that will be coming up on my schedule, or just get access to my schedule in general, or argue with me on my Discord, link to my Patreon right over there. Don't feel obligated. Tough times, I understand. Options is available. Till then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.